put my wig on a little bit today, wig. That's fine. And my weekdays and no weekdays. Yeah, it's a wig day. <laughs> you look beautiful with and without it, baby. <laughs> And this is Jim. And you are? Who are you? We have a guest here today, guys. <laughs> For part of the show. I don't know if she's going to stay the whole show. What's your name? No, stay with Daddy. Stay with Daddy. What's right. your name? Tell us your name. Yeah. Look over there. Look at the camera. Tell them who you are. Yeah. <laughs> the camera. Tell the camera. This is our little yeah. guest. What's your name? Yeah. Kara. Kara. This is our little guest, Kara. Kara. <laughs> So guys, before we start this video, we just want to make um, clear that we are sharing this story to share the information, to let anybody that has gone through the same, to let you know you're not by yourself, and also to inform, to help people out there because sometimes there's things you could have done differently, maybe it would have changed the outcome, maybe it wouldn't have, we don't know, you know, you don't know. So there's things that, you know, you could do differently and maybe not. So we're just sharing it just to inform, to let you know if you've gone through the same, you're not alone. We're not really sharing it just to get pity. Um, we love you guys. We love the fact that, you know, you're watching our videos. But we're just trying to make sure that, you know, you understand that the video is just to share the information, right? Yeah. So let's get on with the story of how we lost our first daughter. If you saw our last video, it was about what we went through to actually have her. It was three years after we were married that I got pregnant for her. So I got pregnant and this is what happened. Yeah, um, we were overjoyed when, when she got pregnant. We, it, she was jumping ecstatic. I was, uh, and I was happy despite the fact that it was going to be my fifth child and I was excited about the fact that I got to be there every minute of her growing up and, and growing inside of my wife. And we took a lot of time and we picked out an extremely long name. I think she, I think we gave her five or six <laughs> names. Six names, yeah. We were so excited. Uh, we gave her a name for every tribe that she, that she's from. <laughs> we did. Uh, and, uh, and, and I watched her grow inside my wife, and we. It, it, I, I sang songs to her, and I read books to her, and I talked to her, and it got so she, she would jump. It, it, I could put my hand on my wife and feel her move when I talked, like she was responding to me, and uh, this went on for six months. Yeah, six months. And then. You know, I, I, I was working at the jail at the time. I had, I was a veteran in, in corrections and I was required to take some additional courses that were mandatory courses that I had to take after, after work. Every, every law enforcement officer has to take continuing education courses. So guys, this is how it all started. I was at work. I used to work for the housing authority. I was a eight to five, eight hours case manager. And I was one of those people that, you know, just want to go to work, never wants to miss work, don't want to use sick leave, you know, just be there. I don't want to disappoint my employer. And the baby was always kicking six months, you know, six months pregnant. And she was always kicking. And then this day I drive all the way to work and I get to work. And then I sit back and I'm like, you know, I haven't felt my baby kick today. I'm like, ah, it'll be all right. She's probably just sleeping. And then the day goes by and I'm like, I cannot feel her kick. Like, is everything okay? And I'm poking, and you know how you're poking, you, sometimes you poke them and you just, you just feel a little boom. And then I'm poking, I'm poking, I'm poking. I'm not feeling anything. And then I'm like, oh, I don't want to leave work. I don't want to disappoint my employer. I had like appointments that day because I used to have about five, four to five appointments a day. 
I didn't want to disappoint the people that were coming to see me. I didn't want to leave, you know, I didn't want to leave, you know, work, you know, because I was just, you know, I just want to please my employer. I don't want to disappoint anybody, you know. And, but the day just kept, the day just kept going by and I kept going back to, I can't feel my baby move. And then I think I was at work for about maybe four or five hours. And then I was like, you know what? I have to leave. I can't feel my baby move. I mean, the worry just increased so much. I was like, you know what? I have to leave. I cannot feel my baby move. You know? So I left. I told my supervisor I left. I ran straight to the hospital. And they took me in. They tied me up to the ultrasound guys. And there was no heartbeat. There was zero heartbeat. You know how you go, you know, you know how something bad happens to you and you feel like you're in a dream? I kept trying to pinch myself to wake up like, okay, this is just a dream. This is not happening. But as every second just went tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, I realized this was for real. So I was at one of those courses at the college when I got a call from my wife that she was in the hospital and the baby had stopped moving. And uh, I was in a panic. I went to the instructor and I begged him to, to uh, let me go. And I you know, rushed over to the hospital, which was really, really close by the uh, college that, uh, that I was attending, within walking distance of it. And uh, I rushed there and she was just in absolute tears. Uh, they had just told her that the baby inside her had died, that there was no heartbeat, that it was no longer alive. And I'll tell you, I have consoled many, many people who have lost a loved one, uh, a few that have lost children. And I can assure you that it's one thing when it's somebody else's loss and it's a whole nother thing when it's your loss. It was the most devastating thing I have ever lived through. The most painful, life-changing thing that has ever, that has ever struck me. And my, how I talk to pe other people who have lost someone, especially lost a child, changed drastically after that. I realized there, there, there are no words of consolement. There is nothing that you can say to someone who has suffered a loss like that that just, that doesn't just increase the pain. It is indescribable how painful that loss was at the time. She, she was in a room and uh, I got in there and they explained to us, the doctor explained to us that you know the baby was dead and they they were going to have to induce labor. Correct. Uh, right. So they induced to, labor, we stayed they, there overnight. They induced labor to, uh, to get the baby out. We stayed there overnight. And guys, when I went to sleep, I closed my eyes and I went to sleep. And you know how you close your eyes? You're like, okay, when I wake up, this is going to be a dream. This is not real. I try to force myself to feel like this is not real. It's just a dream. When I slept, I opened my eyes in the morning. I found myself in that same hospital. I wasn't on my bed. It was for real. And uh, they induced labor and Giera came out. And despite the fact that she wasn't fully formed, she was still, she was so beautiful. Such a beautiful, beautiful little girl. I think she was like one pound, a couple of ounces. Uh, had we known in advance that there was a problem with, with the pregnancy, it would have been possible to take her out and keep her alive in an incubator. But... Yeah, at that stage. It, it, but by the time we knew there was a problem, she was already dead. There was nothing to do to save her. And uh, 
the doctor showed us uh, what had caused it. Uh, there was a knot in the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord had gotten uh, had gotten tied, and I guess from her bouncing around in there and wriggling and moving, and the knot had just kept tightening and tightening and tightening until it cut off the blood supply and the oxygen and, and everything to her. And she smothered to death, starved to death inside her mother. And just the horror of how she died made it even worse. That, that it had to have taken so long and been such a suffering death. It, it, I don't think I've ever gotten over how how horrible that death was. And uh, the pain is still sharp. To anybody, it, it, anybody who's never experienced it, it, you just don't know. You just don't the, know. The, the pain, and I you learn to don't move know. on. Right. Yeah, you learn to you move learn on, to move the pain on. is still there. You learn to move on, and, and you learn to live life, and... and you know, we love all of our other children and we take great joy in, in, in their growing up and their experiences. But the pain of that loss is always there. The hollowness is always there in the background. The, it, you, you learn to put the grief aside, but it never completely goes away. It, it's always there. We, we've kept, we kept Jira's ashes. We did, guys. We kept her. We decided we didn't want to bury her. I don't even know. We just decided. Well, we the options to... with ashes are to scatter the ashes in Correct. a garden, or some people spread them on the beach or in the, in, in the ocean. But uh, we decided we would keep her ashes. We decided, yeah. And, and we we have kept her ashes, and we kept a number of mementos and keepsakes that were given to us as gifts. Now it did cause a rift in the family when we decided that we did not want to do a, a memorial service. Uh, we considered our grief private, and we didn't want it, it, we didn't want to go to a memorial service and share it with 50 or 100 or more friends and relatives who uh, who wanted to, uh, to be there for us. Uh, I understand they wanted to be there for us. I can't remember we, why we didn't want to. I really can't. We considered it, 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 it. We just considered it to be private. We just considered it something that was ours and we didn't want to share it guys i was in so much pain we were in pain i was in so much pain after being so patient for so long and being and just waiting and going through all what we went through and then having her and the excitement and then losing her I'm not gonna lie, I was in pain. I've gotten over it, you know, like I've, you know, life has gone on. I mean, we have other kids, but I was in pain. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I just wanna let you know that if you've gone through anything like this of recent, there is a God. And He's not gonna fail you. He will not fail you. He will never fail you. <clears throat> We kept her. Why did we keep her? Why did we keep the ashes? Oh, I'm, I'm happy. I, I, She's my child. I'm glad. I saw no reason to be rid of the ashes of my child. I mean... I keep her there as a reminder. Not that people that bury their kids did anything wrong, girl. We, we're not no. trying to say if you bury your kids, you did choice. anything wrong. It's a choice. Yeah. Whether to keep the ashes or scatter the ashes or bury them in the ground. It's a choice. It's a choice. And... Your choice is your choice. Correct. It's that, not. It, there's nothing. There's no right or wrong. Correct. In, 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 in. Some choices don't have a right and a wrong. And that doesn't They're mean. They're just your choice. Uh, like your choice to have uh, uh, have eggs for breakfast, fruit salad, or oatmeal for breakfast. I mean, it's your choice. There's no right choice. There's no wrong choice. You know, some things just aren't right and wrong. They're just are. And that doesn't mean you love the child any less. Whatever disposition you choose for your child doesn't when, mean you when love you've them lost less. them, or for your loved one when you've lost them, uh, it, doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't mean you love them less because you chose one thing or another. And it, there's, you should feel satisfied Correct. 
with your choice. So we decided to keep her on here. We have um, Giera, that was her name. Her name was Giera, and Giera was Jim and Sarah. And that's because sometimes I used to spell my name S-E-R-A. So we mixed, we put our names together and it was Giera. It was J-I-E-R-A, Giera. And she had some other long names. What we did was we gave her an ancestral name. We gave her an Irish name. We gave her a, a, a we gave her a Wari name. Yeah. And we gave her, well, a Nigerian name. And we gave her a Dwala name, a, a, a Cameroonian name. name. <laughs> she had so many names. Our current kids right now, they either have a Nigerian middle name or a Cameroon middle name. But she had it all. She had it all. And um, I had this little note here that we wrote. And these flowers were given to us by friends and family. And we just kept it. I just kept it and I have this little note here. Right? Keep it in the flowers by her ashes. And it says, some people only dream of angels. We held one in our arms. So we held an angel in our arms. And she is always going to be our little girl. We love her. We, we still, we, we love her. We, I mean, and we, we just had an attachment to her and we decided to keep her. And... Yeah, that's, that's, there's our story, guys. And again, like we said, it's not to feel sorry for us. It's just to share the information. If you're going through the same thing, we understand where you're going and things will be better. That doesn't mean you stop loving. To those who are going through the grief of lo losing a loved one, the grief does ease. Life does go on. And there will be more joyous times ahead. It's okay to grieve and it's okay to move on and let go of the person that you've lost. We understand, we love you and as my wife pointed out there is a God. If you lean on God, God will see you through anything and I mean anything. We love you and God bless you and thank you for watching and to our subscribers, thank you for subscribing. Yay. We're we're almost at 200. We're almost at 200, guys. Help us get to 500, and then 5 million, and 500 million. We we really really want to share our story with as many people as possible. So help us get there. Thank you for watching, and thank you so much for those of you who have given loving and kind comments. We really appreciate the wonderful people who watch our videos. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know how much extra stuff there? <laughs> oh my God, you just spread all over your face. So guys, Thank you so much for watching. May your life be long and ever so blessed. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Don't forget, don't forget to don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, like, subscribe. comment. We need your comments. We'll respond to your comments. We love your comments. So like, subscribe, comment, and share. Please share with everyone that you know. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this girl. I said bye. You said bye. Mm -hmm. Are you cute? Are you cute?